All right, when it comes to self-sabotage, how can I recover from it? Really, really good question. I think it's an important question when it comes to understanding, um, well, kind of accepting it's gonna happen. And I think it comes down to, to three basic things. When self-sabotage happens and you recognize it, it's really important. Number one, you have to give yourself grace. It happens to everybody. Number two, you have to make sure you got support around you. So to remember that you are loved no matter what you do. And number three, and this gets back to the previous question, to take the long view, take the macro view. Look at the big versus the small. Let's start with the first one. Giving grace to yourself essentially means you accept that you're human and you are going to be off the mark sometimes, you're gonna make mistakes. And that's, that's part of the game, that's kind of how it works. No one came here being a genius and getting everything perfect, no one. And so, and if people tell you that they are, then that means they really, really have some big insecurities. So no one is like that, no one is perfect. So accepting that, and maybe even giving yourself some slack and some, some ease when it comes to you making progress. So it might be a thing of you self-sabotage all the time, and then suddenly you're in a situation and it's like you stop right for the cliff, Wally Coyote or Roadrunner style. You're like, oh, almost did it. Wait. And you reflect for a second. And then you do it anyway. That reflection is growth. Even if you have self-sabotaging anyway, that one, two, three second delay, right? As the fame saying goes, there's uh, the gap between um, re between um, response and, oh, oh no, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting another one. The gap between response and reaction. The gap between reaction and response that's where the wisdom is. So you're ready to react on something, especially if you're mad or something, you're ready to react. But then if you pause long enough, then you actually can have a response. Something that actually matches the situation. It's almost like a level of emotional intelligence. You might self-sabotage anyway. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I've been there. But what was the process right before you self-sabotage? Were you more reflective? Did you realize you might be self-sabotaging, but you convince yourself otherwise and I'm doing it? As you keep working on that, the gap gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you get that level of awareness. The books, the tools, the videos that I'm giving you today, hopefully will help with that awareness and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Trust me, that that's, that gap that gap can only get wider, but it's it's never gonna, it's, that, that tension's never gonna go away. It's kind of how it works. Again, you see the gray hairs in my chin, so I've been around long enough. It, it doesn't go away. You get better at it, but it never goes away. Once you accept it doesn't go away, I think you can give yourself more grace. Because I think often we're hard on ourselves because we believe it's gonna go away. And it's like, no, actually it doesn't go away at all. Like that, that's not how it works. Number one, if you want to recover from it, you have to accept that. Uh, some level of grace for yourself. And then, you know, whatever you deal with, it's not gonna go away. The second thing is bringing lots of support. And that could be um, your, um, your blood family, your chosen family, your your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues, your partner, whatever, your kids, your parent, doesn't matter. But someone to go and say, yeah, you did that and you're still okay. Yeah, you did that and you're still loved. Even connecting with other people who might have a similar self-sabotage thing where like, I have so many people in my life that consider themselves perfectionists. And they could talk, and I'm not a perfectionist, but as you can tell by, <laughs> like, I'm kind of more of a launcher than a, than, a per, than a perfectionist, but that's a whole nother episode. But the thing is that I'll see them have conversations and I'll have no idea what they're saying. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? I don't, and they're like, oh, well, you're not really, you're not really a perfectionist. I'm like, no, nope. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> if you're watching, you know who you are. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. But that's, that's bonding. That's giving each other grace. Not just giving yourself grace, giving each other grace. Be like, yeah, I get it, it's hard. I want everything to be perfect. And I gotta let, the, let that stuff go. I can't relate to that. But they found people that they can relate to. Again, I got other issues. So it's like, I find people that have like issues and they, those people in some ways became, you know, my chosen family. So shout out to them. Again, you know who you are. But finding other people 
that will give that grace to you and remind you that you're worthy of whatever you happen to be pursuing. And lastly, taking the long view of it, you see me coming very New Jersey right now, using my hands all the time, but very long view. So if, if it's something that you self-sabotage and it was say a job offer, are there gonna be other job offers? Were there reasons why, actual reasons why the job wasn't a good fit for you? Are there gonna be other opportunities that are similar to that particular job? Do you need a job right now or can you wait a little bit longer? Is it a dire situation? Like just that one idea, you can try and do the calculus on it, bring out the abacus and be like, oh, this wasn't life or death. Some situations are life or death. I've been in a couple, so let's keep it real. Sometimes it is that, but most of the time it isn't. And it's like, the main thing that's that's hurting right now is your ego. I got, I got a big one, so I get it. And sometimes it's like, that's the main thing that hurts. And it's like, all right, if you can nurse that, then you'll be all right and move on to the next thing. So if you're trying to recover from a self-sabotage situation, like it already happened, not while it's happening, but it already happened, it's done. Then you want to give yourself grace you want to be surrounded by people that will give, also give you grace. And you want to take the long view and decide how really important that thing is. Sometimes it is really important, but sometimes the main thing bruised is your ego. Here's a, um, an episode, having a long-term vision beyond now. It's actually a really short kind of experimental episode I did probably about a year and a half ago. But it was like various clips from the previous episodes talking about having a long-term vision. I think the whole episode's like six minutes long. It's very short, but it's like three or four different little episodes. I think you might enjoy it. And um, I rediscovered it again. I'm approaching 400 episodes, so I don't remember all of them, to be, to be honest. But I was exploring my um, my show a few days ago for an upcoming project. You can look for it in the upcoming days. You'll get a notification when it comes out. I was, I was working on this project. And I came across this and I'm like, you know what? That would kind of fit the vibe as far as thinking long term. Um, and also being generous and, and gentle and, and having grace with ourselves as much as possible. And the classic, shout out to Dr. Carol Dweck. The classic, Mindset. You might not have heard of the book Mindset. It's an unusual title, but you probably have heard of Fixed Mindset and Growth Mindset. A fixed Mindset and the Growth Mindset. You, if you're watching this channel, you probably have heard of this before, even in passing. But let's break it down. A fixed mindset says, this is who I am. This is my view on the world. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. This will never change. I am good at math. I am bad at science. Fixed mindset, <coughs> excuse me. Growth mindset says, I'm not great at math right now. Or, I'm sorry, I'm really good at math right now when I get to higher levels of math, I might have some challenges. I suck at science right now, but maybe when I get to chemistry, I'm gonna be okay. Or maybe biology will be my thing. Let's do biology instead. The difference is one person saying, this is who I am, I can never change. It's almost like being um, whatever you have from birth. Like I, like I have a birthmark, like, like it's like having a birthmark. It's like, no, this is what I am. <laughs> I'm tuned to this, right? It's almost like almost like the class society, you know what I mean? Where you get into the um, the different rankings. Like, okay, you, you're born of shopkeepers. You're gonna be a shopkeeper the rest of your life. You got some kids, they're gonna be shopkeepers too forever. That's the energy of a fixed mindset. A growth mindset, as an employer says, okay, I'm, this is who I am right now. This one thing could happen, or more importantly, I could grow, hence growth, I could grow in a certain way so that this isn't true anymore. When I first started the channel, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. All my episodes are up there. You can go back to episode one. And yeah, it, it looks like I'm being held in an underground cave against my will. I'll leave it at that <laughs> with the lighting and all that stuff. But at that moment, you got a choice. You meaning all of us, you could say, okay, this kind of sucks. I think I'm going to stop because I'm going to suck. 400 episodes in, I'm still going to suck. And I'm about to hit my 400 episodes. So speaking from experience, that's the, the fixed mindset. Or you can do the growth mindset and say, yeah, this, this sucks. But I wonder if I can 
do a little bit of research, get a little bit better lighting. And you notice I was tripping over a couple of my words. Maybe I could script it out as opposed to freestyling. <laughs> Maybe I can do that. And then episode two comes and it's like, oh, the lighting's a little bit better. Maybe I shouldn't have the window open, especially here in the desert. I live in Las Vegas. Maybe I shouldn't have the window open because the light's really harsh. And it's like, even for my brown skin, it's like, make, it's like blank, blanking me out. Nobody can see me. Why don't I roll down the windows, get some blinds, and then have stronger light? Okay. And those adjustments happen. Growth is really about adjustments. It's about saying, I'm here right now. If I'm willing to make these adjustments, these not sacrifices, that's a little bit too dramatic, but if I'm willing to put the work in, back when I was talking about work at the beginning of the episode, if I'm willing to put the work in, then I'm confident this will improve. I don't know if I'm gonna be like on this level, but I definitely can be better than where I am right now. That mindset helps with the self-sabotage as far as it not happening. Because if you have a fixed mindset, then you're basically saying, wow, let's go back to the job thing. Well, I was in a job interview and I said something really stupid again. <sighs> All right, well, I guess I'm not good at job interviews, so I'll just stop interviewing for jobs, which <laughs> sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, but some folks have that mentality and it's like, even if they don't say it out loud, it's like, okay, you're just not gonna, just not gonna interview for jobs anymore. I hope you like entrepreneurship, <laughs> right? <laughs> what else are you gonna do? Okay. All right, good luck, right? Come, come watch Damon's show. But where a growth mindset will come in and say, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and I suck at job interviewing. I'm gonna take a LinkedIn thing and I'm gonna go ahead and figure out, like, you know how LinkedIn has the, um, the classes, right? They used to call it something else. That's why I'm forgetting the name of it. But their new class system where it's like, okay, this is a certain class I'm gonna take. And it's about how to interview people or how to, how to be, I'm used to interviewing people as a journalist, how to be interviewed and so forth. And, and I'm gonna take that and maybe I'll be like one or 2%, maybe even 10% better. So I'll go to the next job interview and I'm ready to go. Those are the differences of the two things, you know, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Mom, there. Yeah, like for real, like, yeah, that, and that's how it works. Thank you. But I, I've been there, you know, even though I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. I've also done a big share of job interviews. Some of them were such different status that they would have changed the course of my career. And it didn't work out, obviously. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here and do this, but also I'm all like, wow, I, I could have handled that differently. But that's also part of what we were talking about in the previous question. That's part of the grace. Thank you for your comment, my dear. But that's part, of the, that's part of the discussion. And Dr. Dweck's book talks about that and basically says these are the two frameworks. It's a really simple book and it's a classic book. Um, I don't think I got into it till almost about 10 years ago. And by then it was already in its like third or fourth edition and I've been out for like 15 years or something. So this book is like classic, like a quarter century old. Fantastic book. It's not more complicated than I'm explaining it. Or actually, I actually might be explaining it more complicated than, than Dr. Dweck does. A fantastic book if you want a quick, simple read and understanding how you can have a better mentality and especially stopping the self-sabotage. This is a good trifecta. Again, I'm so excited about the books books today. Number one, The Big Leap. Number two, Upstream. And number three, get my fingers right. <laughs> number three, Mindset. All three are just killer. They should be on your shelf. I have them all. I have Mindset somewhere around here. I have Upstream an audiobook and I have The Big Leap an audiobook. Both of those audiobooks, by the way, are fantastic. I don't know the audiobook of Mindset, but the links are there. All the stuff is there. However, whatever uh, framework or mindset you want to run with. That is today's show. And our topic today was how to stop self-sabotage. Everything, everything I talked about, I get the words out of my mouth. Everything I talked about, all the links are below, including the books, the videos, all that. Um, I'm really excited about today's show because I think there's some really good information in here. And if it's almost like when, when there's a, a song that you love or even a book that you love, which is the case for me, and someone hasn't heard it or read it yet, you get all excited, I'm at that point. Because these three books are like ridiculously good. So shout out to all the authors. And now how hard it is to write books. So you guys did some classics. Once again, I'm entrepreneurial coach Damon Brown. 
helping you as a side hustler, a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Brain Wars show is live every Wednesday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. I might be doing some reruns, a couple of things. So this summertime, I got my little boys. So we'll see where it goes, but I look forward to connecting with you out there in the summer. And you can subscribe for free. If I happen to be having an off week or doing a rerun, this episode 384, like, I don't know what y'all want. Like, you got 383 other episodes to watch. If you watch all of them, congratulations. If you haven't, which is most of you, go, go through the archives, see what's happening. And hopefully I can be part of your summer and shout out to my folks down under winter viewing. Until next time, remember you can always bring your worth. You can always build from now. Take care of yourselves and others.